There are certain people in sales that are outperforming everyone else many times over. And I call these people superstars. Superstar salespeople are in the top five to 1% of salespeople who are simply crushing it. These people are wealthy. These are people who are dominating the competition. So whether you're a salesperson or a business owner, being in that superstar category can mean many times over in terms of your potential income. So in this video, I'm going to show you seven things to avoid if you want to be a superstar salesperson. Check it out. Number one, pitching. If you have been in sales for a long time, chances are you use the word pitch all the time when you talk about prospect meetings. Oh, I'm gonna pitch this, or oh, I've got a pitch meeting shortly. But the reality is that in modern selling, pitching is the single worst thing that we can be doing. Superstar salespeople simply do not pitch their prospects. What their focus is, is on engaging prospects into conversation. And if we're pitching our offering with our features and our benefits and all the great stuff that we do and how our company's so awesome, the prospect is immediately going to tune out because they don't care. They're so used to the pitch from all of those average salespeople that what a superstar salesperson has to be doing is the complete opposite of everyone else. So drop that pitch. Number two, what keeps you up at night? I use this question as a proxy for starting any sales conversation just with a generic question, right? So it may sound like, hey, what keeps you up at night? Or I'd love to learn more about your business. Tell me, what's your biggest challenge? If you are starting off conversations with questions like that, you are going to be in trouble because your prospects, particularly if they're high level buyers, are gonna be arms crossed and they're gonna be like, why the hell would I answer that question? I don't even know who you are. You haven't told me anything about yourself or what you guys do. I see no value in you. Why the hell would I answer your questions? So if we are trying to start off conversations with these generic, vague questions, our prospects are immediately going to shut down just as hard as if we went in pitching because your prospects ultimately need to see real value before they're willing to answer questions. Number three, probing. Superstar salespeople do not probe their prospects. Now, they do ask questions throughout the sales conversation, but they're not just probing. The way I think about probing is the way, you know, a doctor who's looking for something that they don't really know what they're looking for, and so they're just searching all over, and they're touching all over, and they don't really know what they're even looking for. That's what a lot of salespeople are doing, is they're asking these random questions from all different angles just to kind of see where it goes. But it's not taking the conversation in a singular direction. Superstar salespeople have a systematic set of questions that are taking the conversation at every point in a certain direction. And it does not involve probing. Number four, BANT. Now, some people may have never heard of BANT, but I hear it a lot in my community where people say, oh, should I try the BANT method? And what BANT stands for is budget, authority, need, timeline. And it's a really cool sounding acronym, but the reality is, is that it is a ludicrous sales process. It makes no sense to start up a conversation by talking about budget and then authority, which is talking about their decision-making process. So it's basically like saying, hey, do you have any money? And then are you the decision maker? And then, oh, by the way, do you have any need for what we have? And then lastly, so what's the timeline for making a decision? The entire process is truly ludicrous in terms of a conversation. It's the dating equivalent of starting off a first date and saying, so, are you serious about getting married? And by the way, are things gonna get interesting tonight with us? It's like, it's just starting the conversation in the wrong place. I'm not saying that those conversations shouldn't happen, that we shouldn't at some time talk about budget, authority, and timeline, and all these things, that's great but it's not how we're going to start off the conversation. Superstar salespeople are first engaging prospects in conversations around their challenges, around what's really going on, and then ultimately getting into some of those more qualifying questions later on. Number five, be their friend. Nothing is a more obvious indicator that a salesperson is average or underperforming than when I hear that their focus is on making friends or on building relationships with prospects. The reality is that your prospects aren't looking for friendships and superstar salespeople aren't looking for friendships when they're in sales. 
What they're looking for are people who are going to be highly qualified prospects. So in order to be a superstar salesperson, we must be focused on the business conversation, not on the relationship or on building these long-term buddy-buddy friendships of people who are gonna come to your wedding or are gonna go to your kid's bar mitzvah. That's not what matters. We're not looking for friendships here. We're focused on real business conversations. The less we're focused and concerned about whether the prospect actually likes us, the more likely that prospect is ultimately to want to buy from us. Because as soon as we're looking for friends, now we're needy, we're afraid to hurt the relationship, we're really clouding our judgment. The goal here is not to find friends in sales, it's to find clients. Number six, hard close. In traditional selling, it's all about going for the close. If you talk to an old school sales manager or someone who's been around for a long time, they're like, so what's your closing question? How are you gonna close that deal? But the reality is that sales is not about the close. It's about the process that leads to it. If your prospects see tremendous value in what you have to offer and you've taken them through a process, the close is going to naturally come. If you're focused on that hard close at the end, you're ultimately going to just get a big, fat, think it over. You're gonna get a maybe, or they're going to ghost on you, or they're going to disappear, because they're gonna to start to feel pressure, and people don't like to feel pressure, and ultimately, the way they respond to pressure is typically by just squirming their way out. Top performing salespeople aren't going for a hardcore close, instead what they're doing is they're taking their prospects through a process that ultimately leads to a decision of either yes or no, and either way, that's okay. Number seven, discount. Superstar salespeople literally get nauseous at the idea of discounting. Average and bottom performing salespeople are willing to give discounts all day long. If we are trying to discount in order to close sales, we are in trouble. That is not top performing behavior. In order to be a superstar salesperson, we've got to be focused on the value that we're bringing to the table. Now, I'm not saying that prospects don't ask for discounts from superstars, of course that happens, but superstar salespeople do not discount their offering. It's not about the price, it's about understanding the prospect's challenges, the value of those challenges, and then the value of solving those challenges. And if your offering is in alignment with the value of solving those challenges, there is no need for a discount. So rather than focusing on discounts, focus on the value that what you do is going to bring to the life of your prospects. So there are seven things to avoid if you want to be a superstar salesperson. And if you enjoyed this video, then I have an amazing free training on the step-by-step -step formula to closing more deals. Just click right here to get registered instantly. Seriously, just click right here. This is an in-depth training that will help you close more deals at higher prices, all while generating more meetings. Also, if you got some value, please like this video below on YouTube and be sure to subscribe to my channel by clicking my face, which should be right about here, to get access to a new video just like this one each week.